Hey everyone, I hope your week has been enjoyable so far. I know it's about to get even better with the two stories I have here next. Just wait until you hear what happened in Michigan as both of these eyewitnesses dealt with something that still lingers in their psyches to this day. And while you're here, if you regularly enjoy the channel but haven't yet subscribed, I'd love to see you shoot a bullseye right in the middle of that subscribe button. Great. Now let's get into the stories. It was just beginning to be springtime, but not quite. It was also still pretty foggy and rainy, but at least it was past the freezing part of the season. So I was on Facebook one night when I got a message from a close friend of mine. I hadn't spoken to him in over a month, but we were pretty decent friends. We would talk on and off. He had a habit of randomly inviting me over for little get-togethers or parties at the last minute. I always gave in. Well, this night, it was roughly 7.30, he shot me a message and asked if I was available to come hang out with him and a few mutual friends. I said yes. He told me to be there around 9, so in an hour and a half. I relaxed a bit longer, got ready. He lives about 20-25 minutes away from me, a little bit out of town where there's not a lot of houses. His house is up on a hill surrounded by a bunch of trees, and the front of his house is not like a typical driveway. It's just dirt from all the driving around on it, with anywhere from four, five, or six cars parked out front at any given time. Also, a really bright floodlight illuminates that area. You have to pull off this dusty gravel road and then right up to his house, and that's it. But the land around is amazing. In the back of his house is a really large hill that kind of slopes down where he has this large bonfire and woods surrounding all of that. Well, that's only relevant to include here because, well, that's where we would usually go party and have fun. So you can picture how we didn't have to worry about neighbors since none were really close by, at least not for a half a mile in either direction. So now driving out to his house, everything was fine. It was a little foggy with somewhat clear skies, not rainy. I think it was a little wetter than usual considering the time of year, so anyway, I pull up to his house and the floodlight comes on. And then as soon as it does, I see this large shape, like a dog shape, but the largest dog I've ever seen in my life jump out from behind his Ford and land right next to my car on the ground. It looks at me and then runs off into the bushes. I was kind of freaked out. This thing was like the size of a lion, you know, like lions in Africa something that could easily pounce and kill you. I remember very clearly parking my car, jumping out, and running to the back of the yard where everybody was, because I was so spooked and I didn't want to be out there alone. I ran right up to him and I said, Dude, you have a flipping lion in your front yard. He looked at me strangely and laughed. I think he thought I was already drinking or something. But I explained to him what happened. He and his sister and a couple of our other friends who were already there were curious, but basically they laughed it off. I guess they thought I was either playing a prank or just joking around. But I insisted and I kept going on about how serious I was and that what I saw did indeed happen. But they paid no attention to that and basically continued going on doing their thing. So I had no choice but to just get over it at that point. Well. As the night went on, we quickly forgot all about the whole giant wolf dog thing that I saw. At least that's what I kept thinking the shape looked like, a giant dog. I mean, I didn't really see exact details because it was dark and the floodlight came on at the front of the house, which it was so bright it just gave me a large silhouette to look at. But as the night went on, probably closer to midnight, I had drunk a little but not a lot. And then eventually, my friend who invited me over was beginning to fall asleep. He's a heavier drinker than I am, and although I enjoy it, I'm much more of a social drinker. But anyway, there were some other mutual friends who had arrived later. They were all getting pretty inebriated too, you know, laughing and talking loudly. And that's when we started hearing noises off in the woods, in the distance. But I didn't really hear them, or I should say I didn't really take note of them at first. Between the bonfire and the beginning of the woods, maybe 200 yards or so, it's a pretty large open space. I mean, you could easily go ATVing. I think there were woods and trees around there at one point, but before my friend bought the property, it was all cleared and torn out, so it's just this big giant clearing that he keeps mowed. 
Well, anyway, we heard all sorts of crashing noises and crashing in the woods, sounding like a large animal coming through the trees. I didn't hear any howling or any other animal noises exactly, just this crashing sound, like something trampling about. I'm trying to paint this picture for you, but I can't really get the words, but imagine the Hulk and put him in the middle of the woods, like in the dark forest at nighttime. Imagine the noise he would make moving around, pushing trees over, stomping. You would probably guess that there was some sort of heavy machinery in there. But yeah, that's how loud it was, except... No machinery sounds were accompanying it, just crashing and thrashing. Some of our friends were mildly concerned. I would say mildly because their state of inebriation took over more than their concern about what was in the woods. I was really the only one that began to get nervous at this point, and it went on for quite a while. I would say close to an hour on and off, but then it suddenly stopped. All the noises from the forest stopped. Even the sounds of the night crickets, even the wind, it was dead silent. And now it was about 1 or 1.30 in the morning, and most everybody but I was out of it. So much so that they were able to ignore any eeriness that was lingering in the air. I sat out there in the quiet for maybe 10, 15 minutes, but then I made the announcement that I was going to go inside, lay down, and figured that they should all come with me. I said so, too that we should all just put out the bonfire and make it a night. Some of them agreed, but one of our friends didn't want to come in and insisted on staying out there. Whatever, I know it was probably a mistake, but I left him stay out there. I would say most of us decided to put out the fire and go in, but a few did stay out there, still talking and laughing. I guess they came in at some point during the night, but I had fallen asleep by then. Luckily, my friend had a pretty big house and a really big living room, so there were many places on the floor to crash. He had mattresses and pads all over, so it wasn't hard to find a spot. I mean, he had his living room set up in a way that 10 or 15 people could be there at any given time. Pretty nice setup, actually. It worked out in our favor, not to mention the giant windows overlooking the yard. Through them, you could perfectly see out to the bonfire area and where all the woods were. Even though I was pretty creeped out, I decided to just fall asleep, and miraculously, I did. Well, the next day, I woke up early, I looked around, and everybody was inside. I was one of the first ones up, though, and decided I should just head home, since I figured everybody would be sleeping for a while longer. But then I noticed my friend was awake, too, so I talked to him a bit and asked him how things went. And then I told him again about the experience that I'd had hoping to explain about the thing that I saw and why I was so uncomfortable the previous night. He said when he left the fire to go back in the house, he was one of the last ones out there. Just two people were still out there. He told me that as he walked to the house, he too had this intense feeling like something or somebody was watching him. He said he looked around, but noted nothing looked strange, and then remarked how weird it all sounds weird because it coincides with exactly what I told him happened to me. He felt like something or somebody was watching him through the woods. I asked him, could it have been neighbors? He said, no, the only neighbor who lives about a half mile away in that direction is an elderly couple, so they would never be going through the woods or near his property at 1.30 or later in the morning. I mean, the couple was at least 80, so there's no way, no reason that that would be happening. Anyway, I know this is probably a dumb story to share because I don't really even have a resolution, but that's because this is exactly how it happened. Both me and my friend totally just got creeped out, separately, by the same thing. And I never did figure out what that silhouette of this large dog was or what the crashing sounds were in the woods. I can't help but find it all really scary that this weird stuff happened to not only me, but him as well on the same night. It makes me think that it maybe really did happen. I mean, we both acknowledged it. Everybody else, though, seemed to downplay it severely. Maybe they knew, but they really didn't want to know. Like I said, this was back in 2013. I've had no sort of experience like that since then. And it's really been the only experience that I've ever had that was even remotely weird since that day. Nothing weird happened. So maybe it was just a fluke. I'm not sure, but maybe we truly did encounter a creature that night. 
but I guess I'll never know. I just hope that it doesn't decide to ever come back. January 5th, 2000, Wexford County, Michigan. I was just getting off Business Loop 131 with my sister when I saw it. There wasn't much else to see in January 2000 in northern Michigan, so the thing really stood out to me. We had been taking turns driving to get to my sister's new apartment, and we were both suffering from eye strain and boredom. I'd already heard all of the stories about the folklore in Wexford County, but nothing had prepared me for what happened next. As we made our way to Cadillac Rest Area 306, I pulled my old beat-up sedan into a parking lot space so she and I could use the restroom before heading onward. She had been bugging me for weeks to see her new apartment up north. I'd been putting it off, only because I needed the overtime at work. But I finally broke down and agreed, even though I thought up north was more dead than anything. I climbed out of the driver's seat and took a moment to stretch, a man was hunched over one of the trash cans. The dark plastic lid was on the ground beside him as if it had been haphazardly cast aside in some desperate measure to get to the bottom of the dumpster. My sister just ignored him and kept on walking toward the public restrooms. She'd seen plenty of homeless people in her life, so it was nothing out of the ordinary for her. I knew it wasn't right to talk to strangers, but I thought the guy was hungry and I felt sorry for him. I bit into my lower lip as I dug into my purse to offer him something to eat. And that's when it happened. As I closed the gap between us, he straightened his spine as he turned to look at me. He had to have been at least seven feet tall. I felt my heart stop in my chest. The body may have seemed to belong to a man, but the head definitely did not. The first thing that came to mind was some kind of dog. Its fur was short and its snout was long. It reminded me of a werewolf, except way more disturbing. The eyes pierced my soul and the yellow-amber tint was something like from another time and place. The ears stood erect along the top of its furry head and its teeth were like massive daggers. When it turned and howled at me, it sounded like a human screaming, like every bone was being broken in their body at the same time. The creature leaned towards me, drool dripped on my purse. I assumed it was searching for the food I had stashed away. It took in my scent with cautious curiosity. When it came closer to my face, I cringed. The breath was foul. The smell of death and decay hung in the air between us. The thought of a local butcher shop flashed briefly in my mind. I was so glad my sister wasn't anywhere near this thing. Between the two of us, I was the better one when it came to self-defense, yet all of the classes in the world couldn't have prepared anybody for this. A low, guttural growl escaped the creature's moist lips as it continued to study me. I noted the thick muscles in its upper body. Its torso was unnaturally wide at the top, but its waist was slimmer, similar to a canine, yet somehow positioned upright on two legs. It just didn't make sense. None of it did. For one thing, it was broad daylight. I had always been led to believe mysterious creatures lurked sometime in the night. As I gazed fearfully into its eyes, I could see intelligent life reflecting back at me. Wherever this creature had come from, it was clearly not your average animal. I started to rethink the local folklore all over again. Maybe the people here had been right all along. Maybe the stories I had heard were real after all. Then it occurred to me that maybe Wexford County wasn't somewhere my sister should go to school. It was then my sister emerged from the public bathroom. She was brushing something off of her shirt when she glanced up. She immediately spied the beast and began to scream. It was more like the kind of scream that made you freeze in place and makes your blood run cold. The kind of scream you only hear in movies before someone dies. 
The creature glanced over at the sound of her voice before scurrying off awkwardly on its two legs. I had never been more grateful to see anyone in my life. She hurried to my side and asked if I was okay. We stole a moment to share a quick hug, so happy that we had been spared. Then I nodded and the two of us sprinted like crazy for the car. I don't know what happened to the thing we saw near the rest stop. I just hit the gas and kept on going. Neither one of us looked back. Luckily, we've never seen it again.